Welcome back to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. What an incredible, heartfelt show it's been so far. But we're moving on to the more medical side of things this afternoon. Going to the dentist and keeping up a good at-home dental health care routine may not be one of your things that you have on your to-do list. But, however, staying on top of both of them can go a long way in helping to keep your teeth and your gums healthy. Now, Cape Town dentist Dr. Zach Shabot is in studio this afternoon and he's going to be explaining a bit more about the causes of gum bleeding and how oral care extends way beyond just brushing. Dr. Zach, so good to have Hi, you in Lee. studio. Hi, uh, so nice to be here. Looking fabulous. You are looking dress. fabulous. I hope you represent uh, good oral health or love and not you know bleeding what? gums. For me, <laughs> oral health is so important because of the work that I do. Of I course. have to make sure that I look after my teeth and I look after my gums as well. Yes. But bleeding gums is something that is uncomfortable, unpleasant, yeah. what exactly leads to it and what are the different types of gum problems that we can experience? So obviously if we have bad oral hygiene that can lead to bleeding gums or if yeah. we brush too hard yes. but more significantly it can actually be indicative of something more serious like something systemic like periodontal disease, periodontitis yeah. which is the advanced form of gingivitis which means you have osteoclastic activity which is bone eating cells destroying the bones oh, surrounding wow. our teeth and that can be devastating. Yes. Then it can also be as a result of lack of vitamins, it could be as a result of lack of clotting factors, yeah. it could be as a result of leukemia, it could also be hormonal changes or like if a woman is pregnant, yeah. all of these things can be leading to bleeding gums okay. and obviously we would un don't want to extend a gingivitis into a periodontitis because we can actually uh, save ourselves from a lot of systemic trouble and issues. So when it comes to poor oral hygiene which naturally leads to bleeding gums, how does one make sure that you have healthy gums, healthy teeth and a healthier life? general? Well I think first of all if, if something is bleeding go and see the oral hygienist first make yeah. sure that you visit the dentist and then obviously follow a good oral hygiene routine so yeah. brushing, flossing, rinsing is very important yeah. and then make sure that you also do not neglect your tongue mm. um, but yeah make sure that you practice good oral health. What are the negative aspects of not practicing good oral health? Well, the, 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 I think the most devastating effect is the fact that it can lead to other systemic conditions yeah. such as diabetes and heart oh, disease. Right. So we can actually literally make sure that we live a better life yeah. through maintaining good oral health, health. Talking about living better life, if anybody is currently watching the show who is experiencing bleeding gums, what can they do from this point to getting there gums to be healthy again? Well I think they first have to try and establish where the bleeding gums are coming from yeah. um, and most of the times it is as a result of bad oral hygiene. Okay. So if you can change your oral hygiene practices that's a good start yeah. but sometimes uh, that alone is not enough yeah. and you have to go and see an oral hygienist to remove the hardened plaque that okay. we call calculus. Oh, so from okay. there on... Calculus, can... like in maths. <laughs> yes, like in, like in maths. Yeah. But not the... Yeah. Not the mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I hate math. And then in terms of mouthwash, I always wanted to know, will mouthwash help with that? Will it relieve some of yes, the... Yes, of course. Mouthwash is very important okay. and that's always a very good avenue to follow because by brushing alone, we only clean 25% of, yes. you know, of the mouth. So yes. the interdental areas is a nice reservoir for bacteria to be harvest, you know, to be, to be gathering. Yeah. So it will be always a good indication to rinse as well and not only brushing alone. Sure. I'm listening to what you're saying but I'm also looking at your face and I'm just like how do we have the most handsome dentist in the country right here? <laughs> that Dr. is so Zach. kind. I'm not slurring. It is as a result of the braces that I'm wearing. Because you're taking care of your teeth. Yeah, of course. You practice never... what you preach. Exactly. You're never too young and you're never too old. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Zach. So nice to be here as always. Oh. Well, tune in again next week because Dr. Zach will be back in the studio with us to tell us everything we need to know about bad breath and how to prevent it and how to treat it and how to tell someone if they've got it and still remain friends. <laughs> Halitosis. <laughs> Brushing alone doesn't clean your whole mouth. Don't just clean your teeth, clean your whole mouth. Complete the clean with Listerine.